In today's video, we're going to talk about feedback decoders, the S88s, and in this case, I'm using a Link S88, which is perfect for use with the Central Station 3. Feedback decoders are nice because they allow you to start to introduce automation to your layout. You can do cool things like a commuter train that runs back and forth between two stations and completely automate that. You can also do a signal control or um, control how trains will enter a station and stop and depart. All with the use of contact tracks and this feedback decoder. As you can tell, the feedback decoder has screw terminals on the bottom to put up to 16 inputs. It comes with a wire with a DIN plug to plug into your central station. And on the top are three buses for other S88 decoders, including the older style S88s. This S88 link needs a power supply. The book will talk about the 66365 and that has already been replaced by the 66367. They're very similar and you can use either one. Comes with a simple jack plug that plugs into the side of the S88 and you're all set. So if you get your central station, in this case we're just using a CS3, not a CS3+, Plus. we're going to use that center port in the back of the central station. The plug has a flat bottom and that needs to go indeed on the bottom when you try to plug this in. Make sure it's seated right. And now you can take the central station 3 back off of its stop. It's always smart to put it on stop before you make any new connections. And we can also go ahead and connect the power to the Link 88, the S88. Then we're going to drop into the menu. Just go ahead and pull down from the top screen and then go to System on the left. Click on it, the system window opens up and click on the icon with the central station that says system. And here you can already see on the bottom that the link S88 has already been added by the central station. We'll click on it and then we can see it's a 6883 version one. It gives you the serial number and then you can click on settings to read additional details. The only thing that could be of use for you right now would be the name. The system called it the link S88-1. I'm happy with that, so I hit the check mark and leave it alone. All these other settings, including length S88 bus 1, as you can see there, and 2, will uh, be changed if you start to add more S88 feedback decoders to this first link S88. So for now, we really don't have to change anything. We can just see that the S88 has been automatically registered. Okay, I changed the uh, layout screen just a little bit to make it easier to see. And now I click on Edit and Add an Article. What we're going to do is we're going to add some S88 contacts, a couple of contact tracks on the screen. The system calls it K1. That's fine for right now. The device is the Link S88, and it's going to be a direct control, so we make sure that's set to direct. And then here in this window, we can select what kind of switch or feedback it is. And in our case, it is an S88 contact track, so we're happy as is. There it is. It is, has been added. And we're going to add a second one, so add article. Again, S88 contacts. System already named it K2, I'm happy with that. It's on the link S88, and you can see everything was already filled out the way I needed it. And now you can see there's the second contact track. They also show up on your layout track diagram, and you can see that I can actuate them by just clicking on them, or I could pull down this window, and I can also actuate them in this pop-up window. So now we already have our first two contact tracks. Now we're going to set it up with the S88 link. 
for that I made a little ground wire. Mine is super short, you can make yours of course much longer and it needs to go to one of the two ground inputs on your S88 link. So either on the left or on the full right and it is a symbol of an inverted capital T. These are screw terminals, so very easy, unscrew a little bit, stick in the wire and then screw it tight and you're set. And of course for this video um, we're going to end up connecting it to your track to the bottom to the side that says O. I always remember that as O for outer rail and that's where it needs to go. And you simply connect it to your track somewhere to the outer rail, the brown. That's all there is to it. Now I had to switch it around uh, for this video and you can see I now connected it to the left ground right there. But it does the same thing, they're both the same. There you see my two contact tracks in the top of the screen and we're going to test by making a little piece of test wire and I'm connecting that to the other ground like so. And this wire is going to simulate that it is a contact track and now I'll hit that first input which is connected to K1 and the moment I touch it you can see on the top of the screen that the central station sees that there's be contact being made and the same for the second one, the K2. The moment we touch it, it lights up. So that's a good sign. This S88 is working just like it should. So now we'll take it one step further and we'll create ourselves a contact track. And we're going to do that by cutting the bridges on the bottom of the track. And it's kind of hard to see, but what you're doing is you're cutting the connections between the two outer rails. And you have to cut it on both sides. And then we're going to add the little red insulator tips to the rail that we just isolated. One on this end of the track and then another one needs to go on the track that clicks in to the other side. So I'm grabbing my good piece of track and already put the insulator on. It's a 70, 40, 30 and connect it. So on the bottom what you'll see is that isolated rail with the red insulator on both sides. And now all we have to do is take our contact wire and connect it to the O on that particular rail that we just isolated. So here we have our setup with the contact rail. I use the white wire, remember that Merklin likes to use blue wires for uh, contact tracks, so if you want to stay with the Merklin colors you should use blue. I connect it to that first terminal the K1 on my screen and now when a wheel set goes onto that track piece it should turn yellow and look it does. So now it detects when a train runs over that contact track and it sends a signal to the S88 which in turn sends a signal to the center station. So now you have seen how to connect an S88 to the central station how it essentially self-registers and then how you can add contact tracks to the menu of the central station and also how to connect the contact tracks to the S88. In the next video we will show you what the central station can do with all this information, this feedback from the contact tracks and that's where the automation and the fun really starts.